Okay, let's start out with Jesus, the very thought of thee, number 89. Thank you guys for being here tonight. You know, one of the things we're learning as we go through this process is uh, how to work on our sound, how to work on our video, and there's other things we have to work on. Like I kind of, I was enjoying the song so much I kind of forgot what verse we were on. <laughs> so, so as you guys were singing the third verse, I was singing the second verse. So when you play this back, if it sounds like we're a little off, it's, I kind of forgot where we were. So it's okay. 
And then also, I thought it needed to be a little lower for me. Is it just because your daughter likes a little higher that I have to suffer? Is that what's going on? There's a lot of conflict going on in a small church. I apologize. These things, we, gotta, we have to work them out. <laughs> but of course, the reason we have so much fun together is Jesus is the center of everything that we do. And so we're thankful that you're able to be here with us. And let's begin with a word of prayer. Father, thank you so much for Jesus and for being able to sing a song that causes us to just think for a few moments about him, about all that it was that he did for us in the short time that he was here on this planet, how he lived, how he interacted with the world around him, the way that the scripture, of course, tells us that God so loved the world, and then Jesus lived it in the way that he reached out to the people around him, how his heart was filled with compassion when he saw the people and how they were like sheep without a shepherd. Father, we thank you for that display of love in addition to the fact of love. And of course, all culminating when you gave your life for us on the cross. And so thank you for songwriters that write about you and help us to be reminded of you. So Lord, we thank you for songs, for just the joy that comes from it. Now, just pray that you'd be with us throughout this hour. Encourage our hearts through song and the word, as always, Lord. We leave ourselves in your care. Thank you that we can be back together again tonight, Lord. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, most songs always started out usually as a poem or some written thing before it was ever a song. So we've been singing all the verses because that's what the author, that's their full thought. So... Try to get their full thought and what they were trying to convey. We're singing number 92, Oh, How I Love Jesus. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing its worth. It sounds like music in my ear. The sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, because he first loved me. It tells me of a Savior's love who died to set me free. It tells me of his precious blood, the sinner's perfect Oh, how I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, because he first loved me. It tells me what my Father has in store for every day, and though I tread a darksome path, he'll sunshine all It tells of one whose loving heart can feel my deepest woe, who in each sorrow bears a part that none can bear below. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he Turn to number 501. Now I belong to Jesus. Jesus, my Lord, will love me forever. From him no power of evil can sever. He gave his life to ransom my soul. Now I belong to Him. Now I belong to Jesus. Jesus belongs to me. Not for the years of time alone, but for eternity. One 
Once I was lost in sin's degradation, Jesus came down to bring me salvation, lifted me up from sorrow and shame. Now I belong to Him. Now I belong to Jesus. Jesus belongs to me. me, freed me from sin and long and enslaved me, his precious blood he gave to redeem, now I belong to him, now I belong to Jesus, Jesus belongs to me, not for the years of time alone, but for eternity. Thank you guys. Great singing tonight. So what's going on here this week? Obviously we had uh, morning and evening service this Wednesday, sticking with our normal pattern, just live stream. Uh, just another occasion for us to connect together. And next week, uh, Lord willing, both Sunday morning service at 11 and Sunday evening at 6, we'll continue this pattern of meeting together. Uh, no Sunday school, no children's church, at least for the summer, I'm guessing we're probably going to stick with and see how that goes. Did tell you next Sunday morning we're going to have a visitor with us. We have a missionary family called the Lords, and they uh, serve in Papua New Guinea. And they've been our missionaries for a while, and they're going to come and share with us what's been going on with them. They're heading back to the field at the end of the summer, and they're very musical. And so they're going to share with us their message, and then also share with us in song that will be in the morning service. And then two weeks from today, uh, Pastor Chip Chase, who was the pastor here in the 60s and uh, was my mentor when I was living in the Chicago area, uh, he's going to be here with us both the morning and the evening service. That's 4th of July weekend. So hopefully some of us will be here. Uh, we'll see how that goes, but that's what's going on for us for the future. Uh, after the service tonight, once the live stream's over, I just want you guys to stick around for a few minutes. I want to talk a little bit about Vacation Bible School and find out who can be here and, and maybe how we should proceed with that. So, Oh, okay. Don't forget, we're still planning on doing family camp, and so if you're interested in doing that, we do have a sign-up sheet. If you're not coming in but you're planning on being here at family camp, uh, just contact uh, Heidi, send us an email, and tell us where you're interested in going, and we'll get you all signed up for that. Hopefully, we'll have a great time out there doing that. Um, let's take a moment and pray for some of our church family. I had a number of people this uh, last couple of weeks that went in for surgery for cancer-related operations, and now they're in that holding pattern waiting to hear back from pathology to find out how they're going to proceed on that. So I have at least two individuals that went through that. So let's take a moment and uh, just pray for those folks and uh, that God will watch over them, and then obviously continue to pray for our church family that will stay protected from this, uh, this current COVID crisis. So let's take a moment and just pray. Lord, huh? Ray does. What, port, port related again? I think so. Okay. So Ray obviously been having problems getting those ports, and we need to keep praying for Ray too because through this process of needing this heart it affected his kidneys and so he doesn't talk about it much but Ray has to go in for dialysis several days a week and so I'd like his kidneys to come back so he doesn't have to get on a list and then wait for you know kidney transplant surgery in addition to the heart transplant so let's keep remembering him in prayer anybody got anything else we doing okay otherwise all right let's take a few moments and pray Lord boy this morning we were talking about prayer as you kind of described for us in the Lord's Prayer, Lord, hallowed be thy name, and we come into your presence praising your name for the way that you've protected our church, for the answers you've given us to prayer throughout recent memory and throughout the history of this church, how you've watched over us. But Lord, we also learned this morning that we could ask things of you, even in that prayer, give us our daily bread. Father, we need you every day. And so we think of our church family and for those folks that have gone through cancer surgery recently, 
and now waiting back for results from pathology to find out what's next. Lord, those words are scary. Anytime you hear the word cancer, it kind of shakes you right to the bone. And so, Lord, we pray for these folks that you will strengthen and encourage them. We pray that the reports will come back so that limited treatment is needed. Father, we know that you can do the miraculous. We talk about it here every week. The miracles that you've done throughout the course of recorded history, and we're able to read them from the parting of the Red Sea to Jesus raising the dead back to life. And so we believe that you could do miraculous, powerful things. And so we pray for these folks that are going through these these traumas right now. And then for our church family that's going through long-term care issues, we think of Nancy and her continuing treatment with her cancer diagnosis, Lord. Pray that you'll continue to strengthen her and give the doctors wisdom about what to do for the future. Pray for Ray as he's been having problems getting this port replaced, and we just pray that you'll guide the doctors as they work on that this week. And then, Lord, with this dialysis, Lord, we know that you could bring these kidneys back to full health, wake them up, and so that he doesn't have to worry about getting on another transplant list. And Lord, you've done such, such a miracle for him and his family and for us, how we're able to look at him and literally have been able to see a miracle. And so, Lord, we just pray that you'll continue to work those miracles for him, get him to the place where he doesn't need that transplant and doesn't have to go in for dialysis each, each week. So, Father, we need your help in these areas. And as David often said, Lord, please rise, turn towards us, respond, help. All of those different words are ones we're using today because we are in need of you. So, Lord, we leave these things at your feet, asking that you might, in fact, rise up and intercede for us. We pray in the only way that we can, in the name of Jesus. It's in his name that we pray. Amen. Next, we're going to sing a song that someone requested for us, and that's Stand By Me. It's not the one you're thinking. <laughs> it's an old tune that um, Tennessee Ernie Ford used to sing, right? <laughs> yeah, but he used to sing it, and uh, he had a great voice, bass voice, and he, it was interesting because he was at a time when you could be a popular singer and sing hymns. So we're going to sing this. Tennessee Ernie Ford. Okay. He had a bass, he was a bass voice, really good voice. All right. <clears throat> when the storms of life are raging, stand by me. When the storms of life are raging, stand by me. When the world is tossing me like a ship upon the sea, wind and water stand by me. In the midst of tribulation stand by me. In the midst of tribulation stand by me. When the host of hell assail, on my strength begins to fail. Thou who never lost a battle stand by me. In the midst of faults and failures, stand by me. In the midst of faults and failures, stand by me. When I do the best I can, and my friends misunderstand, Thou who knowest all about me, stand by me. When I'm growing old and feeble, stand by me. When I'm growing old and feeble, stand by me. When my life becomes a burden and I'm nearing chilly Jordan, thou lily of the valley, stand by me. Thank you, everybody. Wow. And then number 294. That last verse is a little rough, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Sing it verses one, two, four, and five. One day when heaven was filled with his praises, one day when sin was as black as can be, Jesus came forth to be born of a virgin, dwelt amongst men, my example is he. Living 
chat a little bit first you know some wonder why is it that some churches like ours we don't get rid of these old hymns you know sing the modern stuff there's a misunderstanding of the purpose of music music is to get us to do a couple things sometimes it's designed to get us to praise him sometimes it's designed to encourage us Sometimes it's designed to help us in the midst of trouble and tribulation. It's not just about making us feel good. That's why words, as you mentioned, are so important. And this song is powerful. I don't think I've ever sung it. And uh, just remind us, let me remind you of some of these words. When the storms of life are raging, stand by me. Boy, it's how appropriate for what's going on today. When the world is tossing me like a ship upon the sea, thou who rulest wind and water, stand by me. In the midst of tribulation, stand by me. When the hosts of hell assail and my strength begins to fail, thou who never lost a battle, stand by me. You know, sometimes you have to just stop and think about these words. They're so powerful. In the midst of faults and failures, stand by me. When I do the best I can and my friends misunderstand, thou who knowest all about me, stand by me. Now, my only complaint, I don't think we should sing the last verse. <laughs> when I'm growing old and feeble, <laughs> oh, 
When my life becomes a burden and I'm nearing chilly Jordan, O oh, thou lily of the valley, stand by me. This is getting old stuff. For those of you that might be watching, you have no idea what that's like. It is, it's just not good. So, like, I have these glasses. And I have to wear these, like, are bifocals. Because I can't see far and I can't see near. And that is a problem around my house. So last week, I got a new dog, for those of you that didn't know, and he's five months old, and he's about 80 pounds already. He's a St. Bernard, and he's very sweet, but when you buy a St. Bernard a bone to chew, you don't buy him a bone like this. You buy him a bone like this. So he's chewing that bone, having a great old day with it, and it's late at night, and I'm very stubborn. And I don't want to admit that I am growing old and feeble. So I refuse to wear these most of the time. Well, when you don't have them on, you can't see the floor, you can't see out there, but I've been living at that house 25 years, so I know it pretty well. So I was going on onto the front porch to get myself a bottle of water, not knowing that his already, we'll call it an ABC bone, already been chewed bone, was right on the floor, and he chewed all the marrow out of the inside, and he had positioned it, right towards my feet. And old and feeble was just marching powerfully to get that thing of water, and my toe went right in that thing. And I let out some... Just air. <laughs> my wife said, are you okay? And then I, I, I couldn't really see, because I didn't have my glasses on, but I could feel that I was old and feeble and bleeding. So I would prefer in the future when we sing this, let's, would, is Charles Tindley still alive? He's not? So I'm going to reword that last one. When you are growing old and feeble. <laughs> so anyway, my friends, if you are the type, and I'm with you, I love some of the newer uh, choruses that we sing. I, I love contemporary Christian music. But one of the reasons why we don't change completely is I think there's power in the words. And don't we need him to stand by us today in the midst of all the things that are going on? So good choice. Uh, was that your choice, Dave? Good song. Thank you for pointing that one out to us. Huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, so this morning, uh, obviously it's Father's Day, so we decided to look at fathers, and it worked out perfectly that we were coming upon this passage of Scripture where Jesus was talking about prayer. And obviously we need to be on a constant communication with him. And so we talked about how it is for fathers. It's a big responsibility to raise up your children in the, the things of the Lord. And so that weighs heavy on our shoulders. And my proposal was that the place to start is to become a, a man of prayer and to spend more time in prayer. And I think personally, as this song has reminded us, with all the things that are going on in the world, it, and you know, I'd like to think that once July gets here, things are going to get better. But guys, we got an election in November. And if you haven't seen how polarized this country has gotten, and I don't know if you've been catching any of the latest Donald Trump ads who are, you know, he's trying to pick out the fact that sometimes dear Joe Biden is growing old and feeble. But old Donald is growing old and feeble too. And so both sides are slinging mud at each other and we're in the middle of this. And honestly, the only thing I care about is I want to make sure that I still have the freedom to be able to tell the world that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life and no man comes to the Father but by him. But it's just going to get more intense out in the world. And the more that the protests gain traction, people will get bolder at doing more protests. And so in the midst of all of that, we need our Savior even more, and so we need to access him even more. And so I believe that fathers and all of us should become more in tuned, committed to being prayer warriors. I've been mentioning several times in the midst of this that we've always supposed to have been prayer warriors, but it's in the midst of a crisis that you are reminded of, of how much you really need to be one. So 
Uh, tonight, we're going to talk a little bit more about what that means, because Jesus is going to continue to talk about prayer, and he's going to give us another story about what we should do in the midst of following his pattern of prayer. So we'll talk about that a little bit tonight. So let's open up with a word of prayer. Lord, <clears throat> thank you for these reminders about us talking with you and about the importance of communicating with you. This is another one of these lessons that you not only taught, but you lived it. So often we read about how you got up earlier, went off by yourself to pray, setting a standard for us that we should be men and women of prayer. One of the most brilliant things that Satan has done to hurt us is he's gotten us so busy with things that oftentimes this, the moments that we should be spending with you kind of get pushed to the side because at the end of the day we're kind of exhausted. So thank you for these reminders that we need to be spending more time in your presence. So we thank you for that. Bless and encourage us as we continue on here in Luke chapter 11, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> All right, Luke chapter 11 is the place. Oh, you know, I take that back. We're going to go first to Matthew chapter 6. I forgot the first thing I wanted to talk about. So the first lesson up this morning, I mean, from this morning, I wanted to talk about this, the Lord's Prayer, which is what we were discussing this morning. You know that there are some religions that take the Lord's Prayer at face value, and they try to say that what the Lord was trying to do was create this prayer that we're just supposed to repeat over and over and again. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And... So that becomes a mainstay in some denominations. In fact, there are some denominations that that's part of their structure. If you're in sin, you're supposed to say so many, our fathers. The truth of the scripture is we know for a fact that's not what Jesus was trying to do. He was trying to give us a pattern for prayer. That's what we looked at this morning. What should be a part of our prayer? Praise, requests reflection, protection. Now, how do I know for a fact that he wasn't trying to set up a prayer we were supposed to repeat over and over and over and over again? Well, the same story in the book of Matthew, Matthew adds something to it that we didn't get in the Luke passage. So let's turn to the book of Matthew, chapter 6. And let's move down to verse 5. So once again... He's getting ready to tell us this same prayer. It's going to begin in verse 9. But look what he says prior to this. Let's begin reading in verse 5. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the street corners to be seen by men. So he's giving us some background in, in prayer. This idea of prayer, it's us communicating with him. It's not about us getting praise from men having flowery words and, and getting to a place where people go, wow, isn't he spiritual? He said, I tell you the truth, they've already received their reward. So here's what you do when you pray. Go into your room, close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what's done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like the pagans, for they think they will be heard by their many words. Do not be like them, for the Father knows what you need before you ask of him. And then he goes on to do the Lord's Prayer. When I was a kid growing up, I grew up in a King James only church. And the, the translation of this passage in the King James is a little better. Because it says, by their vain repetitions. He just gets done saying no repeating, no babbling, here's the pattern. So I find it fascinating that we have denominations that literally hold this up as something we're supposed to memorize and repeat over and over and over and over again when Jesus himself said, don't repeat it over and over and over and over again. Well, 
Let's turn to Psalm chapter 5. Why, why was this important? Why was it that Jesus didn't want us just repeating these words? And, 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 and Let's go to Psalm chapter 5 and verse 3. The same problem exists within music as it would exist within this. One of my problems with any kind of contemporary music, and and you'll see this sometimes, they will sing the same verses over and over and over, and they'll just keep repeating it and repeating it and repeating it. What happens when you do that is all of a sudden you lose the meaning for what you're saying. I mean, look tonight at the words of that song that I read. They're powerful words. When we're praying with the Father, they're not supposed to be mindless. This is a chat. This is a communication. This is between our Father and us. We get to talk with Him. It's not just about repeating something over and over again. It's coming into His presence and say, Lord, I need help. When you read through the book of Psalms, David, of course, as we've mentioned again and again and again, was in trouble regularly. And each time you'll notice that his plea is a little different than the time before. It kind of connects to whatever his situation is. Sometimes it's because his friends have betrayed him and he just prays about that. Sometimes it's because he's discouraged and he prays about that. Other times the threat is real and he prays about that. So this idea of repeating something over and over and over again was not what Jesus was trying to say. That's why this morning I broke it down as to what I think it was about, was to tell us what should be a part of our prayer life. Here in Psalm chapter 5, in verse 3, you get this idea of this communication that we should have with him. Let's back up to verse 1. He says, Give ear to my words, O Lord, Consider my sighing. Listen to my cry for help, my King and my God, for to you I pray. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I lay my request before you and wait in expectation. Communication, here's what I need. I'm laying it out for you. Please help me. Not just repeating something over and over and over again until it gets to the point or it has no meaning whatsoever. Our communication with him is filled with meaning. Jesus said, ask anything in my name and I hear you. So the Lord's prayer was designed to teach us the kind of things to pray for, not to teach us a prayer to pray. Does that make sense? All right, let's go back to Luke. I was going to talk about that this morning, but I was almost over anyway, so I'd have been in, in bigger trouble. All right, so Lesson 62 was about how to pray. I'm calling this Lesson 62B because Jesus continues right after telling us about how to pray and gave us this instruction of what to say. But then he's going to continue and give us more instruction. So let's begin reading in verse 5. Because he's going to teach us something else that is of utmost importance for us when it comes to praying. And I think it is overlooked today because we live in a society where we want things and we want things right now. Anybody else feel like that? And because we want things right away, this part of our prayer life kind of gets laid aside. So let's see what he's trying to teach us right after he tells us about this prayer pattern. Then he says to them, so I want to teach you something else about it. Suppose one of you has a friend and he goes to him at midnight and says, friend, lend me three loaves of bread because a friend of mine as on a journey has come to see me and I've got nothing set before him. Then the one inside answers, don't bother me. The door is already locked. My children are with me in bed, cutting down and heating. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, though he will not give up and give him the bread because he is his friend, yet because of the man's boldness, he will get up 
and give him as much as he needs. So the guy's just not quitting. He's going, listen, I need the bread. Get up. I'm not getting up. Get up. I'm not getting up. Please. All right. I'll get you what you need. My friends, when it comes to us praying to the King of Kings, Jesus is trying to tell us we are to be in the business of praying with persistence. Don't give up. Whatever it is that you're praying for, keep praying for it. The reason it's hard for us is because we live in a day and age where we want something and we get it. We have so many conveniences that are a part of our life that we, that we grew up with. And each generation has it worse than the one before. I mean, just think of the changes for the, I'm looking around here, and even most of us, the changes that we've experienced. I mean, I've gotten so used to some of these things. I mean, when I was a kid, you know what it was like? I grew up in, a, in the Chicago area, and we had a thing called a two-flat. And so my grandfather lived downstairs, and we lived in the second floor. And it was pretty tiny. You walked into the door, you were in the kitchen. There was a bedroom. You walk down this little hallway, bathroom, closet, living room, other bedroom, that's it. But we, my father was a police officer, and we had some bucks because we had two black and white televisions. My dad had one in the living room, and mom and I had one in the kitchen. And, once again, some people just had the three channels. My father got us the one with the UHF. We had like five channels. It's great. Oh, man. Woo-hoo. Channel 32 we had. But you had to get up and change them. Now, I sit in my lazy boy, and I turn up the volume when necessary, and not only can I flick the channels, if I decide I need more pop, I can pause it and go get myself some pop and come back and turn it on again. And so we're used to getting everything the minute that we want it. I mean, we even experienced it here when we wanted to start live streaming and we, we bought all this fancy stuff and we paid extra money to charter so that we could live stream freely. And then when it didn't work, we're like, what's going on? We want it now. But God is trying to lay the foundation that in his world, he responds to persistence. Now this idea is so important, I would say so vital, that we get a similar lesson about it, once again in the book of Luke, but a different story, but trying to drive home the same point. Let's go to Luke chapter 18. Eventually, we'll get to this and have to look at it again, but at the rate we're going, you'll probably forget that we covered it anyway. <laughs> Luke chapter 18. This is one of my favorite stories in the Scripture. It once again describes for us this idea of us being persistent, kind of just assaulting the throne room of God and saying, this is so important to me, I need you to respond to it. So let's read the parable. Luke Chapter 18. So Jesus told his disciples a parable, and look at what he was telling it for, to show them that they should always pray and not give up. Now I'm going to give you some background right now. I don't know why in God's world we should have to pray and not give up. I don't know about you, but I would like it that the minute I asked for something, I'd get an answer be pretty nice but the scripture makes it clear that this savior that we're talking to is not a genie in the bottle and we just rub on it and we get three wishes he is the king of kings and the lord of lords and we're to respond to him in reverence as we learned this morning in submission not my will but thine be done and it seems from the scripture that our god responds to our persistence because he looks at it and says it is actually important to them because they keep bringing it into my presence. And so he tells this story to remind us to be persistent. So this is how you ought to pray and not give up. He said, in a certain town there was a judge. 
He didn't fear God, and he didn't care about men. Sounds like a nice guy. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with this plea, I have an adversary, I want you to grant me justice. For some time he refused, but finally he said to himself, even though I, I don't fear God, I don't even care about men, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually wear me out with her coming. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? My friends, we are to be in the business of praying with persistence and not giving up. And the world is filled with stories of what we can accomplish with persistence. So I was trying to write this sermon, and the bad part about writing a sermon, and you're on the internet, and YouTube is right there. So I, I just put in on YouTube, and I put in the word persistence. And up popped a bunch of animal videos. And one I couldn't quit watching was this guy was trying to figure out how his cat kept getting out of the house, so he set up a camera down the hallway to watch. And sure enough, this crazy cat spent the better part of a morning continuing to jump up on that handle, knocking it down, until he figured out if he jumped up and pulled it down, he could get his other paw in there and open the door, and it swung down, and then he fell and he got out. Persistence rewarded. So we see that in life, how it works. I knew I was going to be preaching this sermon tonight, and my, uh, some of my grandkids were over for lunch today. Now, my granddaughter Athena is obsessed, obsessed with salad and vegetables. So we had ordered, it's Father's Day, and of course you've got to have good food, so we ordered from Outback today. But Athena, she wants salad. So everybody's salad gets out, and, and, and how you doing, Athena? I, I need more cucumbers. Oh, okay, so Reuben starts looking through his food. I need more cucumbers. I need more. By the time she got done, everybody is just rummaging through their salads because she needs more cucumbers. She's figured out the power of persistence. I was ready to run to the store and get her a cucumber. <laughs> Persistence works in families, my friends. All of you have experienced that one time or another. You keep asking your parents long enough that they finally say, almost like the unjust judge, the kid's not going to shut up unless I give them what they want. So Jesus is trying to teach us this reminder that persistence is important. I put this question up there. You have to ask yourself when it comes to this idea of persistence is, how important is this request? I think sometimes we just throw requests out, well, I would really like this or I would really like that. And I think Jesus is looking to see how, how vital is it? Like, I hope you've been praying every day that they'll come up with a solution for this COVID-19 because I want to get back to the business of having these doors open and talking about Jesus Christ. We need to be assaulting the throne room of God because it's important to us. How about that our church family is protected by what's going on, not only with all the protests and the riots, but also because of this COVID. Is it important to us? If it is, we should be willing to put forth the effort I am amazed at how much effort people in the world will put in for things that shouldn't be as important as this. Anybody know what groundbreaking event happened in Novi this last week? Chick-fil-A opened up. Anybody see the pictures from the aerial view? See all those cars? Those cars are all in line 
to go through Chick-fil-A the day it opened. Seven hour wait. Now listen, I like Chick-fil-A as much as the next guy. But I would rather get in my car and drive to the Chick-fil-A in Ohio. Well, that's an hour drive. I get my food an hour drive back. I've only lost two and a half hours, not seven. Right, Trav? We get your car. You get great mileage. We may have to do a Chick-fil-A run. Now, seven hours. Why would you wait seven hours? Because it was important. Maybe you tried it on vacation and you wanted to see if it was just as good. Now, if anybody from Chick-fil-A is watching this, by the way, Chick-fil-A was at the top of my list. Until about five years or so ago, they got rid of coleslaw, should have never happened, and they got rid of cheesecake. I don't know what, I'm worried about their future when they're making dumb decisions like that. <laughs> but I will say, it's still pretty good. So why is this important? Because we will wait seven hours to get and take advantage of Chick-fil-A, and yet we'll spend three minutes assaulting the throne room of God about something. If taking advantage of a new chicken product is that important, how much more important should our prayer life be? I happened to watch on Facebook when people were, these pictures were popping up all day long, and somebody that I'm friends with in in Facebook, posted a message underneath, and I give him credit for posting it, said, I wonder if people would wait in line that long to see Jesus. You know? Think about it. How long is it going to be? I, with what's been going on in the world, I kind of thought our church would be packed every moment we opened up the doors. With all the unknown going on in the world... The one thing that doesn't change, the known, is that Jesus is our rock and a refuge and a person that we can turn to. But yet we'll wait seven hours for Chick-fil-A, but as far as putting in some time to chat with the king. And so our God is trying to tell us about how important our prayer life should be and how important it is that we pray with persistency. What's my encouragement to us today? I'm burdened for this country. I'm, I'm missing the kids that we work with each and every week. And so I'm going to keep praying that this thing will end for the specific reason it's limiting what we can do. So let's pray regularly that, that God will intervene. Let's pray that our Vacation Bible School is a great week with the kids. Let's pray that Corn Fest <clears throat> is bigger than we've ever had it before and we get to meet people we've never met before. Let's pray every day and pray with persistence. How about the folks in our church family that have been struggling with medical issues for a long time? Let's pray with persistence that God will bring healing. Let's keep coming into the throne room because he says, if the unjust judge said, enough, I can't take it anymore, I want to get rid of you, our father is the just judge. And so here's this reminder that though we live in a day and age where we expect things to be done right away, here's a reminder that sometimes we have to pray and pray and pray and alert God to the fact that whatever this is that's burdening me is driving me to come into your presence each and every day. Persistence. Let's go back to Luke chapter 11. One last lesson in there. Start reading in verse 9. Of course, as we've been mentioning, this idea of why we're coming into his presence is because Jesus told us we can. Verse 9, so I say to you, <clears throat> ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open for everyone who asks receives. He who seeks find and to him who knocks the door will be opened. Of course, we just learned sometimes you've got to knock a long time. And now I love verse 11. And that's what this next lesson is. My friends, this God that we're talking about is a giver of good gifts. Which of you fathers, 
if your son asks for a fish, would give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, I like the little shots that Jesus gives, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? So he's using an illustration of something that everybody understood, a father and a child, to help us understand our relationship with the heavenly father. It's one thing I love about the word of God is it always uses something everybody can understand. Whether you are a parent now or not, you know what it was like to have a parent. And as a kid growing up, my father was not a believer in giving us gifts throughout the year. But we knew come Christmas time, he'd save up for things. And I remember one Christmas, and for those of you that are a little bit younger might not understand this, but I was waiting for a stereo record player. Not just a record player, I wanted a stereo one. And so Christmas came. My dad had this way of doing it. First, and I'm sorry, Mom, to rat you out like this, but Mom always gave me, like, socks and underwear. It was devastating to me. She denies it now, but she's 91, and she is (laughs) growing old and feeble. (laughs) She's still in Florida, so when she gets back, you know, we'll see. But uh, So we get all those little presents first, and then my dad would come out with the big one. I'll never forget, I pulled that thing out, and it had two speakers on the top that clipped together. You could literally, I could carry it to my friend's house. And then you'd put it down, and you'd unclip the stereo speakers, and you could move them out to the side, and I could put my 33 and a third record on it. And I just lit up when Dad gave that to me. It was important. He loved giving it, and I loved receiving it. And, of course, I became a parent, and the the ability to give my kids gifts. My father kind of passed that on to me, and as my kids were getting near the point that they were getting ready to drive, my dad had been putting money aside for them. Not a lot. My kids didn't get a Mercedes. They got a Saturn. Remember that company? (laughs) And so my dad saved up this money, and I was looking around, and I remember when Shannon turned 16, we took her to get her license on her 16th birthday, and she came back home, and there was the Saturn sitting there ready to go. And she got in it, and she was so thrilled. She got her friends in it, and off they went. And man, I just was thrilled to be able to do it. So he uses this picture that we all understand, a father loving taking care of their kids and giving them something that puts a smile on their face and gets them the light up, and that 30, 40, 50 years later, you're still talking about it. And if a heavenly father, I mean, if an earthly father, who's evil, (laughs) knows how to do these things, my friends, just imagine what the heavenly father wants to do for us. So we have this picture of something that everybody can understand. And he tells it in that way to encourage us to ask Big things of our Father. I put it like this. If we understand what he's trying to say, shouldn't it encourage us with persistence to ask big things of him? I think sometimes we don't read this enough to understand that he's telling us that the Father loves doing things for us. I mean, how many of you, our fathers, wouldn't do anything for your kids today? Moms, same thing. Do anything for your kids. Grandparents. And it's in that context that we are supposed to think of him. I think when you get that, it encourages you to say, I can't wait to get home and ask God for things. I still think, and I believe this with all my heart, that God still has amazing things in store for Salem Bible Church. 
I still think there's a place for churches that open up the word of God and preach exactly what is in there because that's exactly what the world needs. So I'm just going to pray and keep asking that God does great things with Salem Bible Church. Allows us even more opportunity to tell the story of him. And so Jesus gives us this illustration so that we will more freely come into his presence. I hope today when you maybe go home and spend some time praying, just think about him as your heavenly father. I try to have this picture of me kind of coming in and sitting down next to him, and he just kind of puts his arm around me and say, what do you need today, Lance? <laughs> it's a wonderful picture that Jesus paints for us to help us improve our prayer life. I mentioned this morning that fathers have this overwhelming responsibility to train up a child in the way that they should go. And of course, the place to start is to be a prayer warrior. And that applies to each one of us. We need to have opportunities to tell people the story of Jesus. And it can start at a place where we deepen our relationship with him. We deepen our prayer time. And so this morning, we learned that part of our prayer life should be praise to him. It's submission to him. Sometimes we got to look deep inside and ask God to see if there's any sin that we need to get rid of. Of course, we need to ask him for protection in this world. And then tonight, this reminder that when you're doing those things, be persistent. Don't be afraid to keep coming into his throne and say, Lord, I know I asked about this, but I'm going to ask about it again. I'm going to ask about it again. We don't have to be embarrassed by that because he says, be like the widow and keep coming in and asking again and again and again. Let's make sure that we do that as a church and as individuals. And anytime you start thinking, well, maybe God's not going to do that for me. Just remember that like your earthly father, your heavenly father wants to give us good gifts. Lord, thank you so much for this reminder about prayer and about how important it is for us to pray with persistence, to be burdened by something so much that we keep coming into your presence and say, Lord, please, Lord, help. Lord, rise up and intercede for us. I know I struggle with this, Lord. I'll say something one day and then I forget about it for another week, but yet we're reminded persistent, consistent prayer for things that burden us. May these lessons hit home with us today, Lord. May we carry it with us this entire week. Thank you for this ability to look into the word. Bless and encourage us as we travel home, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. See you Wednesday at 7. And church family, don't leave yet.